This video is going to focus on turning our little red block into a fully fledged cool player character thing. It'll be able to animate while it walks and it'll be able to turn right, up, left, and down. All that stuff while covering everything you need to know about player sprites. This one's a little bit on the longer side, but that's just because there's a couple things to consider. And again, I want to do my best to just explain everything pretty clearly. So yeah, here we go. Okay, so we're back in our workspace. Let's go over to our player sprite. We are going to make a... I, right now, am going to make a little placeholder animation just to show you how this works. So I'm going to make a little arrow here. I'm going to copy this arrow and paste it over here. And now I'm going to go up to these frames. I'm going to copy this frame and paste it so we have two, so we actually have an animation here. And... I'm going to move this arrow up and maybe in the other frame I'm gonna move this arrow up so it's it's almost like little it's almost like little feet and I put these arrows facing down because this is in the place of our little character sprite facing down whenever we actually get around to whenever you actually get around to animating something you know so Let's go open up this little tab here, which dictates the animation speed, because right now it is at 30 frames a second, which is going to be very fast. So let's set this to something like maybe four. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. It all depends on what your final animation is, but uh, this is pretty cool. So we can exit out of this. It's just placeholder right now. Let's make three more player sprites. One for facing the right, one for facing upwards, and one for facing the left. And we can actually go ahead and rename our player sprite to sprite player underscore down. And so yeah, let's make a right, up, and left version of this. You can actually right click on a sprite asset and you can duplicate it if you want. This might be a little bit faster to do. So I'm gonna make this one sprite player right. I'm going to open this up, and you can actually rotate an image. So let's go to our image on the tools up here, and we are going to rotate all frames anti-clockwise, which will make it turn to the right. Okay, like I said, this is just placeholder stuff, so it doesn't really matter. So you can go ahead and do the same basic thing for a uh, sprite player up and sprite player left. Okay, so now we have our four player sprites. Let's go to scripts now and make a new one of these. What we're gonna be doing right here is setting up some macros, which are just gonna be our own constants. Variables that we can reference any time that their value cannot change. We can actually get rid of all this stuff. We don't need it. Scripts in Game Maker Studio 2.3 all essentially run at the beginning of the game by themselves. So we can get rid of this and we can say, macro right zero so we're making a macro we're making a constant see it turned red here and we're gonna make this all caps just so it's easy to not accidentally name another variable like this this will be the only thing that we name like this so we're gonna do a macro for right we're gonna do a macro for up and we're gonna do left and down as well. So this is just about the best order to do this in, where right is zero, up is one, left is two, down is three. You can visualize it as numbers on a circle graph, going from the right being zero, and then going counterclockwise, up being one, left being two, down being three. And that should be it. We can also rename this script and just call it script macros just so we know that that's where we set all that stuff so now we can go back into our player object we can go back into the create event and add some variables that will help us figure out which way the player should be facing and animating and all that stuff we're going to add a new variable type called an array and this is what that looks like so this is what an array looks like you see it turn blue here like a normal uh, like a normal variable so it's a variable with brackets and it starts with zero and it goes up it basically means that you can have a variable with the same name 
but a bunch of different values in it so you can reference them easily and you'll see why this is advantageous. So our first one that we've set is sprite zero equals sprite player right. That's because if you remember, we set that macro of right to zero, which actually means that we can change this value here to sprite right equals sprite player right. So you kind of see what we're going to be doing here. Let's do the same thing for, we can do sprite up equals sprite player up. We can do sprite left equals sprite player left and sprite down equals sprite player down. This will be exactly the same if this was sprite bracket zero, sprite bracket one, sprite bracket two, sprite bracket three. This is just a much more clear way of figuring out what we're doing here. So we need one more variable and this will actually determine the way the character is facing. So we can call this variable face and we can set this to down since normally whenever you run your game the first time whenever you want it to show up you probably want your character facing the the camera let's start putting this stuff into motion so let's go back to our step event and we can go ahead and add this at the bottom here we will say set sprite so here we can say sprite index which is the sprite that our player will have shown currently equals sprite face. So we have this face variable telling us which way we're facing and dependent on what that variable is, it will set our sprite to the correct thing. So if our face is down, like it is here, our sprite will be set to this variable, which is sprite player down. Pretty easy. Now we just need to determine what direction we actually are facing. So here is a super simple way to do that. Let's go above this line here, and we will say if our X speed is greater than zero, which means if we're moving to the right, then we can say face equals right. Easy. And we can do the same thing with left. So if our X speed is less than zero, we can set our face to left. So now if we're moving to the right, the game will figure out that we're facing the right, and then it will set our sprite to the right player sprite. Pretty cool. So we can do that with Y speed as well. So let's say if our Y speed is greater than zero, remember that means we're actually going down. So that would be our face equals down. And we can say if our Y speed is less than zero, we're going up. So we should be facing up. Okay, let's test that out really quick. So we've started and our player is facing down like they should be. So if we move to the left, yep, if we move up, if we move right. Okay, cool, so it works. So you might notice something. In certain directions, if we start moving diagonally, the sprite might change in kind of a weird way. So right now, if we're moving to the right and we press down or up, this happens where it just keeps, it keeps flopping around. And the same thing happens if we move left. And that is because the order, let's go ahead and exit out of that. That is because the order that we're doing this. So even if we're moving right, once we press down, once we press left, down, or up, it will run the code in that order. And so it will set it to whatever the most recent true thing is. So there's a way to stop that from happening, which is also very simple. So if we're getting our left and right, we can say if our Y speed is equal to zero, then we can run this little bit of code. And this is how you would write is equal to, not y speed equals zero. We're saying if it is equal to zero. This would still work if you just had one, but it's a much better practice to just go ahead and do two and know that if you're using if statements or whatever, that's just the way to do it. But anyways, what this is gonna do is as long as we are not moving up and down, the game will say, okay, we can go ahead and set it to our left and right. And we can do the exact same thing over here by saying if our X speed is equal to zero, then we will be allowed to change 
to our up and down sprite. And basically just what this means is that whichever direction we started moving first, once we move in a diagonal, our sprite won't just change to that. The one that we're doing first trumps the new one. So if I run that again, now if we move left and then hit up and right, we are still facing the direction that we started moving. See? And same thing works for up and down. Shouldn't have put all these walls here, hold on. Yeah. Looky there. Easy. Okay, so a quick thing I just realized that's an issue. Right now, if our player goes from not moving to moving at like a diagonal in the opposite direction at the same time, then the sprites don't change properly. But that's okay, there's an easy fix for this. So I've isolated the code out here, and we are just gonna add a couple lines that fix this. So right here, let's add if our x speed is greater than zero, which means we'd be moving to the right, and our face is equal to left, then we're gonna run some code here. This double AND symbol basically just means that both of these statements need to be true to execute this code. It can be written like this, but in general, in coding, you're going to see it written like this. So this basically just means if this, also if this. So anyways, so if we are moving to the right and we're facing the left, we can just switch the face back to the right. Easy. And we can do the same thing with the left. So we can just copy this. We can say now, if our x speed is less than zero, which means we're moving to the left, but we're facing the right, let's switch our face back to the left. We can do the same thing with the y speeds. Just remember that the y speeds, again, work where the bottom of the screen is the higher number, which would mean if our y speed is greater than zero, we should be going down, so if the y speed is greater than zero, and we're facing up, we should just make ourselves face down, and we can do the exact same thing here. So, the y speed is less than zero, and we're facing down, we'll go up. There's a lot of just similar looking variables hanging out around here, so just pay attention to make sure you're getting all of this correct. So let's see here. Yep. Seems to work just fine. And it works exactly the same normally. So if I'm moving right and I go up and right, I stay that way. And oh yeah. Okay. Now this is undeniably a little duct tapey, just a little bit. Having the player move in eight directions, but only face four directions requires a little bit of a finesse, I guess. Well, anyways, in the rest of the video, if you see me go back through the player stuff, this block of code is going to be what it was before, not this new one. So just keep that in mind. It's not its not going to be long before I, I, I leap back from the future and interject on myself again for something I did wrong with the sprites. But uh, don't worry, it's the only other time it happens and it's coming up in a second. So now the character faces the right way and we've set it up to where we can use the different sprites for walking up, left, right, down, and now the only thing to do is to just make some prettier sprites. Okay, so here's some sprites that I just imported from another project I had. I got a right, up, left, and down. You can tell the animations are pretty simple, but that's not a problem. Feel free to uh, copy these or make your own, do whatever you want to do. There's just a couple things we need to check now that we're making more complex sprites. So I'm going to go into the down player sprite, and I'm going to stop this from animating go back to our first frame to look at everything. So let's talk about origin points. This right here is the origin of the player, and this is where the player's X and Y point will be. You need to make sure that all of your sprites have their origin points at the, basically the same spot logically. So what I mean is I've put the origin between the feet of the player on all the sprites here. So here, here, and here. And you can actually see that on our right and up sprites, this ends up being the origin is at seven pixels in, 20 pixels down. 
and over here it's 9. So these values don't have to be the same, they just have to be kind of on the same pivot point. If your origins are just kind of haphazardly put wherever, like maybe this one is at the top left of the image, maybe this one's like over here, maybe this one's still in between the feet, and this one's over here or whatever. When you turn your player, you're gonna get some, some absolutely wacky results. So for me, I always like to put them in between the player's feet. I think that's a pretty good place to put them, and it just makes sense. Then we need to check our collision mask. So go over to the collision mask. You see, I've, I've already set mine where I want it to be. I want it to kind of be this area, so this will be where the player actually collides with walls and stuff. Much like the origin point, the collision mask needs to be very consistent between all the sprites. But if you end up adding a lot of sprites, or you have a bunch of different directions, or maybe your player turns eight directions, it can be pretty difficult to keep track of every single collision mask in every single sprite for your player. Maybe you've made a bunch of sprites and then you decide, eh, actually I want it to be a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. Then you'll have to manually go into all of them. In a little bit, I show you a super easy way to manage these. So for now, just worry about setting your sprite player down to the collision mask size that you want. Now I know I said prettier sprites was all that there was left to do, but I did actually forget to do one thing. The player doesn't actually stop animating whenever they aren't moving. Super, super simple fix for this. I'm gonna exit out of these and then we can hop back into our player object. So let's add a bit down here and we'll call it animate. And basically the only conditions we're gonna set here, we're gonna say if our x speed is zero and if our y speed is zero, we can make sure our image index always sets back to the first frame of the animation, which is zero. Let's run our game and see what we got. So right away we can see that my little character is not animating, which is perfect. So let's see if we move to the left, move to the right. Yeah, looking pretty good. And we uh, run into everything okay. Actually, here is the other thing we have to do. So you see, if I move to the right and I move here and I try and move down or up, my character isn't moving. What we're going to do is we are going to set our collision mask to always be the player down sprite. And we can do that very, very easily. So in our setting our sprite, we can just come up here and we can say mask index equals sprite down. So now no matter what our actual sprite is, the collision for uh, our player will always be drawing from our down facing sprite, which means no matter how you change this, how you edit this, how you move it around, whatever, it will always be fine. You won't get any weird stuff like getting stuck. This should fix everything. So let's check. Let's see here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, looking good. Perfect. I just realized something that needs to be fixed. So this code right here is totally fine, but where we have it is actually causing a little issue. So allow me to demonstrate. First of all, yeah, talk about a glow up, but let me show you what this problem is. So if I'm against a wall like this and facing to the left, if I press down, the player won't actually turn down because the Y speed is being set to zero and changing the sprite depends on what our speeds are. So, to fix this, it is extremely simple. If we take all of this code here, so I'm gonna control X to cut it, and we put it before the collisions, now, now the character's sprite will change basically based on our input, and the collisions will still be fine, like so. Okay, yeah, this is this is the way it's supposed to go. All right, catch you later. Now you might be noticing a little thing where our player walks up to walls and the wall is on top of the player. Don't worry, we're gonna address that a little bit later. But now we are gonna move on to making a tile set and having the camera follow the player around so we can make our room a little bit bigger than just this screen. So that was part two. You saw there, there were a couple times where I had to like go back and kind of amend some stuff. 
Hopefully the way I edited the video, it made sure it wasn't very confusing. But ultimately, it's a good thing to demonstrate how things can kind of go wrong, or how easy it might be to overlook very simple things. That being said, all the types of concepts that show up in this video are the stuff that you're going to be doing so often that it will just get totally burned into you. Anyways, the next video is going to be super fun. We're going to do some nice little simple tile sets. We're going to make sure that the camera follows the player. Easy breezy stuff and very creative. You'll actually be able to start making levels. So yeah, go go get on that. Go get on that right now. Or, or take a break. Taking a break is probably a good idea too, every now and then. Whatever. Well, I'm just gonna end the video and then you do what you want.